Typography plays an important part in the product you design. In many instances, text can take up most of the user interface, which is why it's key for you to pick the right type and font for your projects. By choosing a certain typeface, you can enhance or reduce readability, accessibility, clarity, and hierarchy of your application. The stakes are high, but don't worry, there are a few things you can consider to make a good choice and not have to use the same old repetitive typeface across all the projects. Hi, I'm Deborah. I'm a product lead and product designer, and I help other designers and creatives level up their game while working in tech. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. The first thing I want to do in this video is clarify the naming because you're going to hear me mentioning typography, typeface, and font a bunch of times. So type Typography is not only this, but for this scenario, we are going to consider that is the technique of arranging type to make the text readable, legible, and visually appealing. It encompasses everything from the choice of the typefaces, the point size, the line length, the spacing between letters, and many other concepts. The typeface is the set of characters that share the same design. Think of it as a family of related fonts. So Helvetica, Times New Roman, Roboto, those are examples of typefaces. Each typeface can include multiple fonts in which they're going to have different weights, so thin, bold, regular, styles such as italic, and different font sizes. So a font is in a specific style and size of a typeface. While Roboto, for example, is going to be the typeface, Roboto Regular 12 that's going to be a font. With that out of the way, now let's get started. All texts need legible typefaces. And when we're talking about user interface, that's even more true. Because when we're designing a brand visual identity or when we're doing graphic design work, we can have more freedom because we're going to have other elements supporting that message. But as we talk about a website, a web app, or an application, the text there needs to be readable. So we are going to begin with starter decisions. They're going to give you an outline on the type and the quantity of typefaces and fonts that you're going to need. So you need to start thinking where that text is going to be applied. Generally, you can have two to three different applications. So you're going to have your primary text, which is the body text used on the majority of the content. Then you're going to have the secondary text, which is going to be made out of headings, subheadings, and highlights. A third application you can have, but this one is totally optional, is you can have a accent font. You're going to use the accent text very sporadically for special elements like a logo or a call to action button. Thinking on the application of the text, that's going to help you think on the amount of fonts and typefaces that you're going to need. It's generally best for you to use two to three typefaces. And here's why. The first reason, it's due to consistency and cohesion. If we introduce many typefaces, that's going to make the product look cluttered and unprofessional. And we don't want that. The second reason is because of emphasis and hierarchy. Different fonts and even different typefaces are going to help you create this visual hierarchy. And lastly, readability. If we introduce way too many fonts, that's going to make the user confused. Sticking to a few fonts and typefaces ensures that the text is easy to read and to navigate. My personal take is that usually I choose one typeface per project, but of course, using them in different styles and sizes so we can have that visual hierarchy that we talked about. So once you have an idea of where your text is going to be about, their different application, and you have a number in mind of typefaces and fonts that you're going to use, now we're going to talk about the type criteria. This is a very quick four-step process for you to make sure that your choices, they're very good when it comes to reading. The first one is choose typefaces with low contrast. So in this context, contrast is going to be the difference between the thickest stroke of a font with the thinnest stroke. If that difference is too big, then that means the font has a high contrast. Low contrast usually is going to make the font easier to read. The second thing to consider is for you to choose typefaces with an open aperture. In typography, the aperture is going to be the opening between the counter and the outside of the letter. 
Fonts with open aperture, like Roboto, are usually easier to read on screens. The third thing for you to consider is to choose fonts with distinct features on each character. It's advisable that the letter forms, they are distinct from one to another. A good test for you to make sure that the letter forms are distinctive within that font family is for you to check the uppercase I, the lowercase L, and the number one. If they look very similar, that's possibly not a very good font for your product. And the fourth thing is for you to mind the special characters. Some languages require accent marks and special characters. If the application or the website that you're going to be designing will need to support different languages, that's something for you to keep in mind. Ensure that the typeface you choose support these, along with numbers and also punctuation marks. All right, now we're done with the theory, and we're going to go over the process of picking and testing typefaces and fonts for your project. So my process starts on Google Fonts. I know some designers are not a big fan of Google Fonts, but I'm a pretty big fan because they have lots of options. They're easy to integrate. Google is very committed to accessibility. So they're going to cover most of that font criteria that we were talking about. It's web safe. There is also compatibility across browsers. So I find so much better to pick fonts from the Google Fonts catalog. So I take those four items from the type criteria into consideration. And I also make sure to keep in mind what type of product it is that I'll be designing, the industry, and also the brand values and the message the brand wants to convey. Because it's not only about picking the best typeface when it comes to accessibility and readability, but we also got to make sure that inside those accessible and readable options that we have, that we pick the one that is mostly aligned with the brand. So as I told you, usually I stick with one typeface. So for that, I'm going to select up to three options. Options that are aligned with the brand and that also meet my type criteria. If I decide that I want more than one typeface and that I'll be pairing them, I'll make sure to do some extra research to see what are the pairings that are mostly common out there. That saves me some time and gets me up to speed so I don't have to test all those pairings and combinations from square one. Figma has a very nice resource on this. It's not very comprehensive, but it has some cool combinations that you can try out. I'm leaving the link in the description so you can have a look. By the way, if you're yet to create your Figma account, make sure to use the link in my description. All right, so once I have my two to three options, what I do is I start to design or to apply those typefaces to two to five interfaces per device type. Make sure to test per device type because as the screens get larger or smaller, that's going to interfere on the readability. So don't skip this part and make sure to consider the different screen sizes. If there is time, you can test with users or even with a small internal group inside your company. So you can have external insights before making the decisions. And there you have it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I'm very positive that you're going to like this one where I share my three-step framework to generate a color system for your UI projects. See you there. Happy designing. <laughs>